are internet moguls rescuing uh, uh, journalism? Um, no, not uh, across the board, but these are two very interesting uh, moves, um, both by uh, Jeff Bezos and Pierre Omidyar. And um, uh, uh, Bezos is taking over a well-established platform in the United States that is, but that has had financial difficulties, and he has the financial strength to um, not have to worry about reducing the losses right away. He can try to reshape it, and and um, he's shown great success in in um, uh, reshaping the books industry, and and uh, so I would not bet against him uh, in the news. Uh, business. In the case of Pierre, we don't know exactly what he's doing. It's like he's um, uh, gotten a, a goalie and a striker for his f football team, but we don't know what the rest of the structure is, is going to be like. But um, uh, he's a, also a very bright person with lots of uh, financial resources. I wouldn't bet against him either. Um, very little chance of nonprofit journalism uh, cannibalizing the for-profit space. I think um, nonprofit journalism is particularly necessary in fields like mine at ProPublica, uh, investigative reporting, where there's been a market failure. But I think it's possible for most of the rest of, of journalism to do it on a profit-making uh, basis. And it's, if that's the case, um, it will succeed and it needn't worry about uh, cannibalization. I, I think that um, uh, what we've got now in the, whole, in the domain of journalism in the United States is we've gone from a, um, a consistent, constant, um, very successful business model that remained essentially unchanged for uh, four decades. And um, it's been replaced by what I call an e e uh, ecosystem of news, mm -hmm. um, where there are um, a wide variety of players. Um, uh, the, the only constant theme is change, uh, change driven heavily by technology. So we've gone from the, uh, the desktop to the laptop to the tablet. Um, there's now heavy talk about movement to the handheld, and who knows what's next? Putting an electron chip in our brain. I don't. I don't know what it is. But the the uh, technological changes are inducing um, constant change in this ecosystem that includes traditional players. It includes um, uh, new um, full service operations. You know, like the Huffington Post. Um, uh, it includes new online boutiques um, like uh, Politico, um, uh, and um, it includes um, nonprofit players like us. I think um, uh, paywalls have to work, um, not for everybody, but for um, news organizations that. Uh, produce um, uh, not necessarily unique but unusual content. Um, uh, so you know, um, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post would um, qualify as as that in the in um, uh, in um, the U.S. And um, uh, if they're producing commodity stuff that you can get from the wires. People will just, you set up a paywall, people will go someplace else. But if you have unique or close to unique content, people will pay. It's been shown that they, that they will. And um, the publishers are getting more and more sophisticated using metering and other techniques to guide people into their um, paid content. So I, I think this is uh, going to be um, an important part of the process going forward. Uh, you know, I, I think in a way um, uh, German journalists would be better at answering that than I am. 
um, uh, because I don't understand your marketplace that well. But but what I would say is that that um, uh, that people can be persuaded um, that, for example, investigative reporting as a check on power, as as an uh, exposer of corruption and. Uh, um, abuse of power, failure to uphold the public interest, people can be persuaded um, that this is important to democracy, having this check on power. And um, uh, as power has gotten more complicated and um, uh, more, more challenging, it's more necessary than ever before. So I, I think the only thing that one can do is to try. Um, uh, when we started at ProPublica, there were only a few foundations that had any serious interest in, investi in investing in journalism. Um, uh, now there are quite a few more, and not just uh, us, but others have um, been benefiting from that. So um, I, would be, I would be hopeful. <laughs> um, it's better to be lucky than smart. Um, uh, when I was still editing the Wall Street Journal in 2006, I was uh, visited by Herb and Marion Sandler, who were people that I knew. They weren't uh, close friends, but people I respected. And um, they were billionaires, and they said they um, were interested in spending $10 million a year to support investigative reporting. And they were talking to a bunch of journalists they knew to try to get ideas about how to spend it. And um, uh, so I said, sure, I was happy to um, uh, suggest uh, an approach. And, and um, uh, so we met a couple months later, and I had basically had a back-of-the-envelope design, but they liked it. They um, uh, asked if I could run it. I said, well, I was going to be at the Wall Street Journal to the end of 2007, but could we start then? And they said yes, and you know, we refined the concept over the next several several months, but that's the way it uh, that's the way it happened. So it was the money was there first, and I was there um, second. I wish I could tell you I had this um, uh, great idea. I didn't. But what I did have was the sense that this was the right time of, for doing this. That the market was failing. Um, uh, the investigative reporting that we had depended on in the United States for four decades was shrinking drastically as uh, newspapers and other news organizations tried to cut costs, and that if we didn't do something to fill in at least some of that gap, we were going to lose an important buttress for democracy. So I was, um, I didn't originate the idea, but I certainly was um, enthusiastic about taking on the challenge. Well, um, uh, first of all, we have a very strict rule that our board members and other funders um, don't know what we're working on and, uh, until it's published. Um, they're free to suggest stories, but only to the top two editors. They can't call up a junior reporter and scare the reporter to death by su uh, suggesting a, a story. And they've Anyone who uh, goes on our board or is our funder uh, understands that. Now, um, there are times when we talk to a foundation about supporting us where um, they have ideas of the kind of coverage they would like to support. And um, if this is coverage that we want to do anyway, we'll say yes. If it's not, we'll say, we'll say no. Um, and that's, that's worked very well for us so far. Thank you very much.